Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is coaxing ourselves beyond the comfort zone. We chase transformation and change, and yet we don't want to rock the boat or feel uncomfortable. And one doesn't happen without the other because we're moving into the unknown. We're moving out of the familiar into an arena that we have yet to discover. So, of course, there's some discomfort associated with that. So we're going to talk about how to coax ourselves into and beyond, uh, uh, beyond our comfort zone into the arena of the unknown. But before we get started, let's take a minute or two to get present. Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, your molecules, your electrons, creating a brilliant beam of light and energy from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together. Vigorously rub your hands together to feel the friction, the temperature, the pressure, the motion the tickling and tingling when you stop and allow all those sensations to bring you present right here, right now, into this remarkable physical form that enables us to experience life. Welcome, 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 and good morning. Good morning, Rosalind. Welcome. So good to have you here joining us this morning. And welcome to everybody else who's with us and we're talking about coaxing ourselves beyond the comfort zone in my uh, core connection work with clients i often see that people choose to end their their work our work together just when they're on the verge of a massive breakthrough when they're on the verge of the next level of evolution and growth and what we can know about evolution and growth and transformation is that it's disruptive that it sort of stares you in the face with choices that may be very may cause upheaval may disrupt the status quo uh, and in fact are likely to and it's interesting to me the lengths that we go to to preserve the status quo as uncomfortable as it may be, as limited as it may be, um, as painful oftentimes as it may be, we defend and preserve it because it's familiar. Kind of like the devil you know is better than whatever you don't. And um, it's such an interesting phenomenon because we say we want freedom and we say we want transform transformation and awakening and yet we tend to believe that we can be 
who we are and carry that into the transformation. And that's our foundational fallacy. Transformation means not staying the same, you know, not being the the person that we know ourselves to be or that we have historically known ourselves to be. It means certainly that essence remains, but I can't tell you how many times I have people show up at sessions and there are a number of people who are tremendously courageous as at going deeper and deeper. Um, so not everybody quits when when the the pedal meet, needs to meet the metal kind of thing. But um, it's only those courageous souls who really continue to to go deeper and deeper. Um, but it's it's amazing to me to see that we want we want change we want transformation and yet we're really committed to things staying the same that uh, so i was saying people show up at sessions terrified of what's on the other side like they know that there's some transformation about to happen and they're terrified because they and they literally say I don't know who I'll be on the other side and people also often say I don't know who I am right now this is unfamiliar so we get to as we make these transformations, we get to rediscover ourselves, to reinvent ourselves, to reawaken or awaken anew into a new life, a new sense of self, a new presence, a new perception. And the interesting thing is, Good morning, good morning. I am loved by God. Wonderful to have you joining us this morning. Um, I did get your message and I will be in touch with you. So thank you for reaching out. Um, I have to regain my train of thought here. Uh, ah, so people arrive at a session being terrified about who they're going to be on the other side and the wondrous and miraculous thing is that on the other side of whatever that transformation is their experiences of being more of themselves more of their authentic selves freer of whatever the thing is that they thought they were and actually feeling liberated into their greater authenticity and and being more present being more peaceful being more whole and it's so fascinating to me that in the face of that opportunity so many of us Re retreat retreat we just say no nope, i don't know what it's going to look like and i'm not going there and so what how can we coax ourselves beyond the comfort zone and i say coax ourselves rather than push and i think that that's a really important distinction because we're taught in our culture, push, 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 drive, 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 more, 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 rather than creating an invitation to ourselves, rather than gentling ourselves, coaxing ourselves, inviting ourselves, um, enticing ourselves, rather than 
pressuring or forcing or or the domination and control kind of um dynamic right and I don't know about you, but when somebody, when I feel forced, when I feel pushed, my knee-jerk response is to resist. To resist and rebel. It's like, don't push me. You know, that's the knee-jerk is push back. And I don't always indulge in that, but that's that's like the knee jerk response, okay? Because what I what I prefer to do is to recognize that and then come to a place of choice to decide to actually choose: Am I going to align with this? Is it not aligned with me? Um. But anyway, we we bully ourselves because we are taught to bully you know and we bully ourselves into doing things oftentimes by speaking harshly to ourselves rather than gently rather than compassionately rather than again providing an invitation so as we face this edge of our comfort zone, what is it that can help us to, to step into that, to step over the edges? The edges are where there's this, where there's the tremendous potential for change right so as we approach the edges that's when things get a little prickly right so that's when we start feeling uncomfortable but we can step into those edges and and feel into those edges and breathe into those edges and one of the things that can really deepen our willingness to explore into and beyond those edges is cultivating a trust in life itself that life is happening for me and through me rather than to me, that I am an expression of life and moving into these edges and beyond these edges is, is allowing life its greater expression. Good morning, good morning, sir. So good to have you here with us, sir. Says thank you for speaking peace, love, and truth. Thank you for that, sir. It's great to have you with us. So exploring these edges, I think if we can create a deeper sense of safety, which is maybe kind of paradoxical because at the edges, you know, in, in the uncertainty of the unknown, that's where we start feeling unsafe because we're moving into something unfamiliar, right? But if we can cultivate this greater context of trust and ultimate safety, like really that, the, that life is unfolding in its perfection, even if we don't comprehend that, if even if we don't necessarily understand that, but we can cultivate that bigger sense of safety to allow ourselves the courage to step into the unknown, to step into the, the discomfort. And the unknown, rather than being fear-inducing, can be excitement-inducing, like it's an adventure. Like we can, because anxiety and excitement are pretty closely bound. 
pretty closely related, right? And so that that heart racing kind of energy can be anxiety or it can be excitement, you know, that there's there's an adventure. The we can be joyfully embracing the unknown. So Rosalind says the tendency is to change to be something else. I like the hall pass where you don't have to do anything. It's uncomfortable. And even in that state, change can occur internally. So I love what you're saying, Rosalind, because we are so oriented to doing. Like we're going to do transformation, right? We're doing our meditation. We're doing our exercise. We're doing awakening, right? And the the truth is, this edge of discomfort, there's ultimately the place of awareness is there's nothing to do. The place of awareness is there's nothing that needs doing. That it's just fine. And when we can actually be in that space, because that's super unfamiliar and super uncomfortable for lots of people. Like you said, it's uncomfortable to, to just not be in the having to do. What can happen from that place is that we can be called into our expression we can be called from the future into our expression which shapes action so it's not that the doing is important it's that the being is where we put our attention and from that space of being we connect to our heart, our soul, our our purpose, and the impulse of life expressing itself in greater and greater and greater purity. And that then has us expressing our essence to be moving. Welcome, freelancer Golem Rabi. Welcome. So good to have you back with us. So the the I work with a lot of folks who are kind of A type personalities in terms of producing in the world, you know, doing a lot, doing, doing, doing. And to have people reorient from the drive to do and get get stuff done to being like i've literally told people stop doing just stop doing focus on being present and the thing is that the stop doing thing that's really just it's a mindset shift because it's not that these people end up stop but not doing anything. It's that what happens is their lives start to flow because they're being present. And the things that get done in their lives sort of flow without this drive and force in the doing. So Sarah says it's impossible to love something and it have power over you and for it to have power over you. That's that's a beautiful thing. And it I, I that actually takes a little bit of reconceptualization on my part, Sarah, to understand that actually. I think you you've put you've put something really important into words there because 
when when we are truly loving there's no there's nothing more powerful than that love so like i i think that our concept of love oftentimes is very um codependent you know that or is very um misdirected like love we we often generally culturally when we think of love we think of attachment in a lot of ways and so when you're what i'm interpreting what you're saying to mean is that when we're truly loving there is none of that attachment so that it doesn't have power over you uh, freelancer Golem Rabi says your video making is very good. Um, so I'm I'm I, please 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 don't use this as an opportunity to be promoting anything. Okay, I, I that you're I appreciate that you're wanting to promote your business, and this just is not the venue for that. So um, I appreciate you. I just would appreciate you being with us for our conversation. Okay, this is not a marketing opportunity. So Rosalind says, no expectation, attachment to an outcome. Exactly, exactly. When we're in the flow. So I have, I had a client who was very, very, very driven to be um, producing, you know, to build the business. She has this big vision for the business she wants to build. And she was driving, driving, driving. She was being mentored by people who were teaching her how to do sales and how to close. And, um, you know, you have to make this many calls and it's going to be this many uh results based on how many calls it and she was doing 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 and nothing was happening other than she was getting deeply 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 frustrated and um then she started doing work with something that she just adored and she was in the experience of it. She was in the flow of it. And all these magical kinds of things were happening that she couldn't have orchestrated no matter how hard she tried. And that's the distinction between this, this doing and being. And when we allow ourselves to be we can be in the flow of life and the doing is a result of that, not the other way around. You know, the doing gets done in flow as a result of our beingness. And so let's get back for a few minutes to the original idea of what we were talking about today which is coaxing ourselves beyond our comfort zone into the edges, into the place where change and transformation actually occurs. So um, Sarah says, I love cannot be contaminated so in the purity of love i i think you're a hundred percent right is that in the purity of love it is it is its own deep profound energy and a very very high frequency of being to be able to access that 
that love. And with that, for me, this is an exercise. This is something that I'm practicing, that I'm deepening in, in my experience is that there's a sense of safety and trust that helps me to open my heart as I become more and more deeply aligned with, with the notion of being an expression of life, that life is flowing through me and I am a unique expression of life itself, that that starts to cultivate a trust, which cultivates a safety, which allows me a feeling of greater freedom to open my heart more and more fully. And so the coaxing ourselves into the edges and beyond our comfort zone, I, I think is aided by our ability to cultivate a sense of safety and trust. So that's the invitation is to be practicing that. Not all of us can access that, that purity of love straight on. Um, and maybe we need inroads into that. So for me also, beauty is another inroad into that sense of, of love and stepping beyond myself. So I invite you to play with that. And hi, Sue. So wonderful to have you with us this morning. Good morning. And um, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, as always, for the opportunity to engage in, in these conversations about what it is to be human and how we navigate this human experience. So I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection, and I go live here each weekday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel, and I invite you to like, follow, and share Enlightened World Network, as well as me. Uh, the links are in the description, and until next time, so much love to you.